So this is teacher Dr. Mgomba Ronald, and we are continuing with our series about respiration. I remain teacher Dr. Mgomba Ronald, and today we are going to go ahead and compare. Uh, we are going to go ahead and look at uh, respiration still. Uh, teacher Dr. Mgomba Ronald. So we are continuing with respiration, and today we are going to go ahead and look at uh, respiration in yeasts. We are looking at respiration in yeast, and today we are going to go ahead and look at an experiment. We are looking at uh, uptake of oxygen in the yeast cells and ethanol production. Uh, we are looking at, we are comparing oxygen uptake in the yeast cells over time, and then we are looking at ethanol production still over time. So that's what we are going to basically look at. We know very well that the yeast cells are able to carry out respiration aerobically and anaerobically, depending on the conditions available. So we are going to start with the, uh, the first question which is telling us, we know very well from our, our previous knowledge uh, that respiration usually which involves Oxygen, uh, oxygen being used to break down glucose, you usually see glucose in the presence of oxygen being used to produce carbon dioxide plus uh, water plus energy. So that's what basically happens during respiration. So, and it is the major factor that is responsible for the uptake of oxygen by the yeast cells. So, we shall start with talking about explanation of the changes in the uptake of oxygen between two hours and four hours. You can clearly see we are going to look at two hours and four hours. So you can clearly see from the graph that between two hours and four hours, we are seeing it here. You can clearly see that there is a slow rise. We are seeing a slow rise in oxygen uptake and that one will help us explain why are we seeing a slow rise in oxygen uptake when you look at this we are seeing a slow rise in oxygen uptake uh, we can say we, we usually have a slow increase in uh, respiration rate so because the respiration rate is increasing slowly then we shall say that explains why there is a slow rise in oxygen uptake. Why? Because we still have a slow rate of cell division in the yeast cells. So the yeast cells are still few in the yeast culture and there are few which are respiring. So since there are few and there are very few which are respiring, so the rate of respiration is still slow. That means that oxygen uptake is also slow. And that means that uh, the rate at which cell division was taking place was also slow. And that could explain why we are seeing the oxygen, uh, we are seeing oxygen uptake is increasing slowly. Now, if we, <coughs> if we are told to explain why oxygen uptake increases thereafter from 4 hours to 12 hours, for instance, you can see that here from 4 hours to 12 hours we are seeing a rapid increase in oxygen uptake. Now, this rapid increase in oxygen uptake simply is talked about maybe as a result of rapid increase in respiration rate or metabolic rate. Why? Because we are seeing a rapid uh, increase in cell division. So, the rate at which cells are dividing is increasing rapidly. So, when the cells are increasing rapidly, even the rate at which cell respiration takes place will be rapid, and that explains why we are having a rapid uptake of oxygen. Uh, a rapid uptake of oxygen. Now, when you look at another one, we are seeing another trend here. You can see that here we are having a, 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 a decrease in the increase, or now a slow increase in oxygen uptake. Now, we can see that we are, here we are having a slow increase. Now, this slow increase can be explained in the form that we are seeing now a slow uh, rate of respiration, uh, a slow respiration rate. Why? Because of it could be as a result of accumulation 
of west and as a, it could be as a result of also uh, increased competition and then it could also be as a result of reduced substrate or glucose. Remember the glucose concentration during this experiment was kept constant. So it could be as a result of exhaustion of the glucose in the experiment. It could be as a result of uh, accumulation of wastes. So as a result, all these ones, they will tend to decrease the rate at which cell division takes place. So we shall see a decrease in cell division. So when the rate at which cell division uh, takes place reduces, automatically we shall see a slow rate or at which respiration is taking place and we shall see a result, we shall see a drop in uptake of oxygen. Then when we are to look at this one here, where you are seeing a decrease, now that decrease can be explained in the form of uh, still accumulation of wastes. Now this one could be as a result of decreased uptake, we can see a decreased uptake of oxygen, then you can clearly see, you can see, you can talk about in terms of decreased rates of respiration. Then the other one could be as a result of uh, the rate at which cell division is taking place is far much lower than the rate at which cell death takes place. The, the cells are dying far, at a far much greater rate at which they, they compared to the rate at which they are being formed. It could be as a result of accumulation of waste still. It could be as a result of waste. It could be as a result of probably, uh, uh, it could be as a result of the, the accumulation of the waste. So if we are to continue, it could be as a result of accumulation of the waste. And when the waste get accumulated or purely exhaustion of the resources, if for instance we have exhaustion of food stores, food is exhausted. Eh? When glucose gets used up, automatically the rate at which the cells are carrying out respiration will also drop. Or accumulation of this waste known as ethanol. So that takes us to our next question, that is to say, explaining. The changes, uh, we go ahead and look at now our next question, which says, explain the changes in the production of ethanol. Now, when you look at the rate at which ethanol is being produced, you can clearly see, you can clearly see that uh, ethanol production, initially at the start of the experiment, there was no ethanol being produced because the cells were respiring purely aerobically. Ethanol is only produced during anaerobic respiration, where we see there is a shortage of supply of oxygen. Now, after, now, that is why ethanol production begins at the 16th hour. That is when ethanol production begins. So usually, the yeast cells usually resort to carrying out to the production of ethanol or anaerobic fermentation only if oxygen gets exhausted. So when oxygen gets exhausted, then that is when we see uh, the cells carrying out oxidation or uh, breakdown of glucose to produce carbon dioxide and ethanol. That is why you will see that the ethanol continues, uh, ethanol begins to rise only after the 16th hour. And you can see that it even correlates with the rate at the, when the cells started to decrease. You can clearly see, notice that. The cells usually resort to production of ethanol because they are relying, they are, they want to extract that little ATP because the, the supply of oxygen has dropped. But you can see that uh, after some time, you can notice that after some time, at this point here, even ethanol production starts to decrease. Now, that decrease in ethanol production is very important for us to note because that one is explained in the form of uh, this end product here. So we can explain it in the form of end product. Inhibition. You can explain it in the form of any product. Inhibition. Now, the the end product has started inhibiting the enzymes. Eh? The ethanol has become poisonous. Now, the ethanol 
Ethanol is poisonous. And it is killing the cells, the yeast cells. So the ethanol is now inhibiting the yeast cells and it is killing them. So we can continue. Sorry about that. So we are going to go ahead and look at now the next question, which is saying explain the effect of adding sodium azide for after four hours on the oxygen uptake. Now, in case we were to add sodium azide, for instance, for instance, if we are to add sodium azide, let's say after four hours, around here, around here. So if we are to add sodium azide, sodium azide added. Now, we would, we would expect the oxygen uptake of oxygen to greatly decrease. Why? Because when you look at that sodium azide, sodium azide, its chemical characteristics, it is a metabolic inhibitor. So, because sodium azide is a metabolic inhibitor, it will inhibit the process of respiration. And when the, it inhibits the process of respiration, we shall see the respiration rate, it will decrease. We shall see a decline in oxygen in respiration rate, and that will, will bring about the overall decrease in the rate of oxygen uptake. Because the, 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 major, the, the major reason as to why oxygen uptake increases is simply because metabolism is taking place, and since this one is sodium azide, it inhibits, it goes ahead and inhibits enzymes which are responsible for the process of respiration. And among the major enzymes that it inhibits is known as cytochrome oxy, oxidase enzyme. So cytochrome oxidase enzyme is inhibited by this substance known as sodium azide. Now, when you look at uh, our next thing here, we are having, they are telling us to compare aerobic respiration and anaerobic respiration. When they, whenever they tell you to compare aerobic respiration and anaerobic respiration, you basically go ahead and talk about um, uh, the similarities and the differences. So we shall begin with the differences. So this side we shall put aerobic respiration, and then this side we shall put anaerobic respiration. So here we shall have, uh, this one uses oxygen, this one no, 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 no oxygen usage. No oxygen is used. Then you can see here that in, this one produces more energy. This one produces lesser ATP. We say the two of them. Then this one produces 38. So you can see the difference. And then, um, what else can we talk about? This one here takes a longer time to produce, to make energy or ATP. This one takes a shorter time. This one does not produce no ethanol. Here we see ethanol being produced. This one takes place in the, uh, in both mitochondria and cytoplasm. This one purely takes place in the cyto plasm of the cell, and so on and so forth. Very many other similar differences. But similarly, when you look at these two processes, we see production of energy. So, we can conclude by looking at, sorry about the blackout, we can conclude by looking at the commercial applications of, we can go ahead and look at the commercial applications of anaerobic respiration. Now, when you look at the commercial applications of anaerobic respiration, it is applied in a number of fields, which we can go ahead and talk about. But I'll put them here. So we shall put them here, the commercial applications. So we can, uh, in making uh, wine, 
making bread. You have heard about uh, bread making. When you look at making bread, they take advantage of the carbon dioxide that is usually produced, which raises the bread. Making wine, they take advantage of the ethanol. Then making spirits. And very many other forms. Even it is very important when it comes to even uh, processing foods and so on and so forth. So in this video we have been looking at the respiration and specifically we have been looking at anaerobic respiration. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for uh, following up to now. I remain teacher Dr. Mugom Ronald. Till next time, uh, we meet next time. Consider to subscribe, consider to share with your colleagues. Consider to always invite your colleagues in case you benefit from the from the tutorial.